Hi everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about Nintendo 64 updates, the Neo Geo Pocket Core, a USB based Nintendo controller adapter that works on Mr. Raspberry Pis and PCs, a possible third party GUI with screenshots, and more. So let's get to it. If you're an owner of the Mr. Multi system, you now have more options to make your system look like your favorite console. They have case designs for the Neo Geo, Genesis slash Mega Drive, and the Sony PlayStation. To go along with these cases, there are adapters that you can purchase that provide ports for the original consoles. The actual cases don't seem to be available for purchase, but the designs were released under an open source license and are free to download from printables.com. So if you have a 3D printer, you can print these 3D cases yourself. The Nintendo 64 core now fulfills existing RSP DMA tests, plus some new ones that the developer created. What this means for the core is that the RSP coprocessor can read from the RD RAM and write back the results. The next step is to implement RSP internal processing. The RSP is a coprocessor for the Nintendo 64 that provided processing for 3D functions and audio. This chip is important to get commercial 3D games working. And regarding more games running, the developer said that some Ubisoft games are showing some initial screens, but there's nothing playable yet. And also as the core matures and games start to actually run, there are plans to have daily builds like there was for the PlayStation core. However, if you don't want to wait, all the latest code is available publicly on GitHub, so you can build the core yourself if you want. Then more updates came later on the week which included implementing the non-vector part of the RSP and this implementation fulfills the first set of RSP tests. The vector instruction part of the RSP is still missing and Robert will work on that next. On Patreon, you will get a lot of detailed information regarding these RSP implementations. Anton Gale posted the schematics of what could be a future core. Schematics of the sync and video generation hardware were posted for what looks to be the arcade game Targ. Targ is a 1980 arcade game developed by Exidy and released by them in North America. It was also released by Sega in Japan. It's a vehicular combat game set in a futuristic world. Well, as futuristic as you can make it in 1980. The team behind the Mr. Multi system have announced a USB adapter for Nintendo controllers. It supports the Super NES and the NES. Multi-tap interfaces for the respective consoles are also supported. Since it's USB, it will work on the Mr. FPGA, Raspberry Pi, PC, and more. This adapter does not seem to be for sale yet, but if you're looking for something that can handle DE9 and DE15 controllers, you can check out the Control Classic SE adapter. It supports controllers for the Neo Geo, Genesis, Mega Drive, Atari VCS, Commodore Amiga, and a lot more. Hotego recently created a thread on Twitter talking about how some ROM color hacks use extra bits and tiles in order to increase the color count. In order for these ROM hacks to work, emulator authors had to support these extra bits. Hotego said that he would like to support color hacks in his cores and encourages artists to create color hacks using this extra bit method. I personally think that System 16 games would be great candidates for color hacks. On the thread, MAME developer Hayes also jumped in saying that some real bootleg hardware would actually use extra bits, giving examples like a Sega System 16 game in which the clone had 4 bits per pixel tiles instead of 3 bits per pixels, and Neo Geo clone hardware that used 8 bit per pixel tiles instead of 4 bit per pixel tiles. Electron Ash on Twitter is working on implementing some PowerVR2 logic in Verilog. The PowerVR 2 was the graphics chip that powered the Dreamcast. Electron Ash has a Twitter thread that explains all the work that has been done so far. Note that this project is not being created for Mr. It's probably going to be developed on a much more powerful FPGA. But it's exciting to see more powerful systems are being developed, regardless if it's on Mr. or not. For the Neo Geo Pocket Core, Otego says that all monochrome games boot up and are somewhat playable but they still all have problems, so more work needs to be done. On Patreon, Otego goes into detail on what needs to be done to improve the core 
and teases us about the next core being an appealing game to make up for not releasing a core in July. Twitter user Leland loaned out a PCB for the arcade game The Fairyland Story to Hotego's team so the hardware can be better documented and of course for core development. The Fairyland Story is a platform arcade game where you control a witch through a series of single screen stages. Your goal is to defeat all of the enemies on each screen. Wizzle, who's developed the remote script and other scripts for the Mr. FPGA, is experimenting with a custom user interface for Mr. On Twitter, he shows off a basic example of a screenshots viewer, which gives you a good idea of how a game browser with screenshots would look like. Performance also looks to be good, because Mr. is rendering it at a solid 60 frames per second at 480p. I personally like the minimalist aspect of the Mr. FPGA GUI, but I understand how some users, and in some certain situations, a more prettier GUI would be something that would be nice to have. But this UI that Wizzle is creating seems to keep that minimalist aspect. And other miscellaneous Mr. Fixes and updates are, for the Sword M5 core, analog input for a cassette player was added. For the TurboGrafx-16 core, there are some fixes in CPU and CD, and another way for auto fire was added. These changes were thanks to David Shadoff. For the PCXT core, there are updates to Sergei's XT BIOS ROMs. Note that the ROMs are named differently now. For the Arcade Astrocade core, there's a new color table based on measurements from the PCB. Thanks to Frank Palazzola, the Sparkle circuit was rewritten to work in Luma and only convert to RGB when completed. Color was extended from 12 bits to 24 bits. The missing word near and GORF was fixed. There were changes to cabinet mode. This mode is not used in normal Mr. Build. DDR RAM use was fixed and code for lamp and joystick light output was added. For the PET 2001 core, support for custom system ROM loading was added, and mirror video memory was implemented for better compatibility. For the Apple II core, this code was updated with support for writing, and there are video ROM options and loadable ROMs. This work was done thanks to Allen SWX. On Mr. Main, the INI selection menu is displayed if the OSD button on the I.O. board is pressed while booting or resetting. Here's another reminder that Neo Geo CD games must be inside the Neo Geo CD folder, along with the BIOS. And there were audio fixes to the Mega CD core thanks to Paul BNL. For the Super Game Boy core, there were audio fixes and a fix for the Joypad ID thanks to Die2G. That's it for other updates. Please also try to support Sorge the maintainer of the Mr. Project, and other Mr. Developers and contributors on support platforms such as Patreon and Ko-fi. Their hard work allows us to enjoy this amazing project. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro-related content. And if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.